Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Yellow Jackets. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, I've talked about the intro opening credits thing before. I want to talk about it again, because I... I and it, I really like it. It might be my favorite. Just a combination of the song mixed with like the crazy visuals we get and just scenes from the show and just other stuff. And just once again that VHS like effect, staticky effect over. I'm like that's such a cool filter and effect on that. It's just so good. It just all blends together so well. So it might be my favorite TV opening credits. Probably other than that would probably be like Psych. But Psych is like I'll put that in a different category because that's more upbeat. I like the song. I just love psych as a show in general plus like you know there's different versions of the opening song like probably the boys to men version is probably my favorite but regardless like i love this intro so much because you could i could skip it any time but i sit there and listen to it anyway and i'm like dude it's so damn good but okay so first and foremost let's start off with the past stuff uh, I like that we get an insight into Laura Lee, uh, which I think personally is like so very like deceiving because it, I mean it's to give you a little bit more understanding about who she is, but also it makes you think like oh since we're learning about Laura Lee, she must be sticking around for a while. I was like nope, but we'll get to that soon enough. But the fact is we learned like right she the moment she jumped in the pool and our head hit the pool I was like Jesus Christ I was like oh that sucks. I think because I've seen something recently, I've talked about it. I've never seen The Amazing Spider-Man 2 Gwen Stacy death because when I originally watched the movie, I looked away because I knew it was coming just because it's a comic book thing that I knew. And I was like, oh, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see it. And I finally saw it recently, and I was like, Jesus Christ. that w I Because it's not how she dies in the comics. They did something different with the movie. So regardless, it kind of reminded me of that when she went thud, and I was like, ugh. But luckily, it was like, oh, she's like, oh, my God, you saved me. The guy was like, no wasn't me that saved you basically it was god and there was a light shining behind him and the um cross around his neck that imagery in itself i was like okay so no wonder you became very like oh believe that you have uh got sh such strong faith because you like oh i died and i came back like i could have died but like oh with the grace of god i was i survived but someone had brought up previously the theme of when lottie was underwater and you see that like um uh, the light around her, but it kind of goes dim or, or dark. I can't remember exactly because someone had brought up when Lottie was having her vision and then she got up when um, um, Laura Lee was kind of baptizing her a little bit to kind of, you know, and I don't remember what the imagery was behind, but they kind of said like, oh, maybe that's kind of representative of her falling away from the light or something like that. So I thought that was interesting. And now this episode adds maybe a different context to that. But Obviously, with everything that's going on, you know, Laura Lee is looking for a sign. She sees the bird nearby, and it just flies away. And she's like, right, like, you know, her and Lottie are talking about, like, what if, is everyone going to be okay? And she's like, all we can do is have faith in them, so. And then, uh, since, we, since we're here in the past, well, let, let, first and foremost, let's, let's finish up with everything at the cabin first. Uh, things are kind of awkward between Nat, Nat and Travis, and the fact is that, Travis is like, no, 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 you go hunting by yourself. You're you're better than I am anyway. That, that sounded like there was a double meaning to that because first and foremost, she's a better shot than you, but also it seems like, right, when it comes to sex, she has more experience to you. So it felt like that. I don't know if Natalie necessarily took it that way. I took it that way. But uh, she went off to talk to Coach. And I love that uh, when she's talking to Ben, it was like, oh, yeah, like, how'd you convince Misty to go? He's like, I didn't actually have to. And she's like, you're gay, right? And he's like, what? It's like... You have a boyfriend? It's like, yeah, I did, but... And it turns into this actually really sweet conversation between them. First and foremost, I'm like, okay, good. Oh, phew, thank God. Coach Ben isn't a... isn't a Because I was starting to be like, uh, maybe. Because I think other people are starting to feel that, too. Like, maybe he's... Just like, I'm finding out, he, like, f first and foremost, finding out he's gay because it's like, woo, it's a sigh of relief because it's like, oh, God, that means you're not a... Because I was kind of worried. Because it was like... Because obviously people had conversations about like... Yeah, the fact is he rolled up with a whole bunch of condoms. Like, you know... It's like... So... But it's like... No, he's... Oh, I was like... Oh, thank... Oh, thank God. Obviously, like... It, it's the 90s. So it's not like it's safe to be... Like, because he was with someone. But someone... The person he was with, the boyfriend he had, Paul... Was like... I want you to, like... Be with me. Be with me. And so, obviously, like... It, not the safest time either at this point in time... Uh, to come out and stuff like that. So... But uh, actually, Natalie asked him kind of for advice. It's like, you know, it's like, right, I've seen the way that kid looks at you. Uh, Travis, he's in deep. Like, I'm just saying, like, you really, like, if you want to, like, have another shot at, you know, 
doing what you're about to do, then go ahead and, you know, then give him another shot. But he's also like, right, what happens between, like, what we talked about can't, and she's like, nope, I completely understand. But that's also why he was kind of like, so that's why he leaned into the Misty thing, because he was trying to let her down gently, because he also knows Misty's kind of a little, knows to some extent she's disturbed, so... I figured as much that I wasn't sure. I was like, is he really truthful? Is he just letting her down because he actually has something else for one, He has a thing for one of the other girls. But even Natalie was like, yeah, you never check us out. You never look at our boobs. So that's kind of indicated to her um, that he was gay. But it's like, okay. But immediately in the back of my brain, I'm like, Misty's not going to be happy about that. Like I had like my thoughts before about like, oh, Misty's not going to be too... Uh, receptive to like you potentially turning her down and any issues that might uh, spring up from that but finding out you're gay I'm curious how she'd react to that it might be a thing of something happens and he gets accused of something but then Natalie later on has to be like there's no way he could have done it they're like why because he was he's gay and it's like we you know I think that the fact is they're setting that up means oh for one it's almost like the show's almost responding like, whoa, 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 you think the worst of Ben he's not a bad guy it's like okay okay but it's also maybe there's a level of like th there's, that's going to come back in some point. Like the fact is they're making that such a poignant point between because it's another secret between people that uh, Ben and between Ben and Natalie. So I think that's going to come up later on, and then Natalie is going to have to be like he's gay, like nothing happened. Because on the flip side of things happening there, we also have the conversation between Travis and Jackie, and. Um, Jackie making things worse because she was like, oh, screw relationships. They're not worth it. And she ends up dropping the name Bobby. And, and the way Travis read that, I was like, why would the name Bobby mean it? I was like, wait, I was like, the name Bobby does sound familiar. I was like, wait, is that the kid who? And yeah, talking to Natalie later, it's like, yep, he's the kid who, he's the douchebag who started the whole flex nickname with um, Travis about him getting like a rib removed or whatever. So that now he can suck his own dick. That whole thing. So it's like, right. And so that's why it hit struck a chord with Travis. And you're like, dude, Jackie screwed things up bad. And so, like, Travis is like, you slept with him? It's like, she's like, I knew that if I told you it was him I slept with, you'd be upset. The fact that, well, his, for one, he was kind of older. So it definitely was creepy. And it was in their van and stuff like that. But it's like, right. She's like, that's before I knew you, Travis. That's even before I knew the whole van thing. He was like, maybe we shouldn't do this, you know? You know, she's like, we all make mistakes. He's like, yeah, maybe I did too. And she's like, really? You're going to ruin this over something stupid like that? And she's like, well, I guess it's a good thing you couldn't get up because this would be a lot harder if you and me had fucked. And he was just kind of like, okay, and walked away. And looks at Jackie and is like, oh, so it was this was you, huh? Fuck you, Jackie. He's like, oh, because she's not in a great mood because she was reading all of Shauna's journals, her journals, so she knows about the whole her and Jeff day. And... She's playing it super passive aggressive because it's like, oh, we'll get to it later on. But it's like, oh, we need medical assistance here. Well, she's not the only one. Shauna, tell them. It's like, no, I don't want to. And it's like, I'm pregnant. It's like, what? Wait, did you get pregnant here? She's like, no. And then later on, Shauna's like, why'd you tell them that? It's like, why? No more secrets. I'm like, shut up, Jackie. You're just being so passive aggressive because it's like, because I think she's trying to play this in a way where, like, oh, I'm looking after, I'm, I'm concerned about you. Like, I'm pretending like we're still best friends and I'm looking after you. But truth be told is, I want that baby taken care of because I don't know whether she's hoping that when they do get rescued and everything gets found out, it'll be like, uh, the baby's, uh, the baby is Jeff's. I, I don't know. Like, because she's upset about that. Obviously, she was crying last episode upon finding it out. But now, like, she's very, like, uh, fuck relationships. But I'm like, what do you get out of doing that? I guess it's just kind of like you're wait waiting for the right time to stab Shauna in the back for her stabbing you in the back by sleeping with your boyfriend. Because, once again, she was saving herself for Jeff. So, eh, I don't know. But like I said, she's very, you can tell it's very, like, her response, oh, no secrets amongst us. You know, I'm just trying to help. I'm like... Oh, you're being super passive aggressive about it. Oh, annoying passive aggressive too. So that's definitely going to be interesting. But on the flip side of things, on the other flip side of things, in the woods, after everything, I was like, damn, Van, they took her, they put her on a pyre, you know, the, um, set her, you know, the lighter. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I was like, 
Cause wouldn't that contradict? I was like, well, you buried the body, so the argument could be that everyone died at, at the, during the crash, right? So I was like, maybe they just. I was like, well, I was like, maybe you could justify that, but then burning her body. I was like, oh, I guess that's how you get around that. But then her eyes move a little bit. I was like, wait, what? Was that a mistake? And it's like, and her eyes start like we see her vision bl- messed up. I was like, oh my god, she's alive. And then I was like, please wake up soon enough so they know that. And they're like, oh my god, she's alive. And she got caught on fire a little bit. And I even love the. I was like, before like. Before she said anything, I was like, oh, that's ironic. And she's like, fire? Really? I'm like, yeah, that is kind of messed up. You got burnt. You almost got burned alive twice. I was like, whole twist. Holy crap. Once again, you thought like, like I said, I brought up earlier, like, oh, Laura Lee, like we got her backstory. I thought she was at least good to some extent that she'd be sticking around a little bit longer. Fact of the matter is they're like, ah, Van, it seemed like she was dead last episode. Nope, still alive. I mean, it makes, because I guess I just would have thought she would have died completely from her wounds or whatever because she just stopped moving. But I guess like she just like passed out from the pain and stuff like that. Her body went into shock because she was still fighting off the wolf till when Thaisa came over. So I guess that should have been some indicator, but still... I wasn't expecting that. I was like, yo, Van's still alive, holding out. And it's like, right, we got to get her back as soon as possible and try to patch her up. And it's like, right, sending the others back because, like, Van is like, leave me. I'm just going to slow you down. It's like, no, Thaisa stays with her. So they make it back in time. And luckily, they all are able to, the whole group comes out to find them and are, and are able to bring her back and, um, I forgot who it was. I think it was Akila. Uh, I think she's the one that actually started, uh, had to um, stitch her mouth up. I was like, oh boy. And just like Van having to keep her mouth closed and she's screaming out in pain. You're like, oh, Jesus. Like Natalie being there to kind of hold her down. Thais is by her side. And I love this next moment of just kind of like Thaisa blaming herself. She's like, I've been sleepwalking. Because the moment she's talking to, we'll get to it later, but the moment she's talking to um, Shauna about it in the future, present day, I was like, oh, wow, so she knows about the sleepwalking, because it's not like a, oh, like, she's like, I'm sleepwalking again, she went to Shauna out of anyone, because she confided in her about it in the past, I was like, well, of course she would, because, well, I didn't know if it was, like, after the fact, but it seems like, now with the context of the past, stuff, it was like, oh, right, so, she told her back then, like, after everything went down with Van, because, it makes sense, it's like, right, like, Shauna kind of, like, she figured out the whole pregnancy thing, sure, but, Shauna did finally confide in her about like right it's Jeff's baby and the complications there so they have a tight enough relationship I guess that's why not only Thaisa's position but I guess that's why Shauna turned to her out of anyone she could have turned to Thaisa has like the power and connection sure but I think on top of like their connection of like right shared secrets and such it's why she ended up going to uh Thaisa in the beginning about that uh about Jessica but I, I, I thought that was kind of a neat moment because it's like, Taisa's says, like, yeah, there's something wrong with me. The fact is that, like, I saw the fire and then, like, I woke up in a tree and, you know, this only happened to Van because of me. She only came there because of me and I'm, she was blaming herself. She's like, I'm afraid of what will happen if I, if I, if I sleepwalk again. And, and Sean, was like, no, 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 I'll be here for you. I'll keep an eye on you. Make sure you don't go anywhere, which I thought was really sweet. But, um... Ultimately, when the time comes, Laura Lee has her mind set on, no, 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 we can't just sit here and wait. Like, the fact is, if winter comes, we're going to starve to death. Plus, like, Van needs medical help. So she's like, right, I've been studying the manual. Like, what she said, I think she said, my grandfather let me take control of the plane for a little while. The plane's full of fuel. I, we need to go. And it's like, okay. Ben was like, no, don't do it. As the adult here, I'm going to stop you. And she's like... How are you going to do that? And then all the girls turn towards him because it is a thing of like, and there's almost this like smug look from Jackie, like, huh, yeah, we outnumber you, plus you're down a leg. But it's still just kind of like, I mean, it, 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 they recognize it comes from a place of like, right, he's just trying to look after you guys. So when the time comes, they cleared out the path, cleared out everything, and Laura Lee, te- you know, and even at the very end, Ben was like, please don't do this, Laura Lee. She's like, I appreciate it, but this is my purpose. And so she gets, I was like, oh boy, how's this going to go wrong? This is going to go wrong. And the fact that she got up in the air, I was like, okay, something's still going to go wrong. Something's still going to go wrong. And it's like, right, we, we can actually save them. And then she turns to her bear, Leonard, and he's on fire. I'm like, how the, where the, how the fuck did that happen? He could just burst into flames out of nowhere. So I'm like, did someone do that? I'm like, you know, I was like, I don't think it's Misty. Like, Misty wouldn't go that hard in the paint. So I'm like, did someone else do that? But it goes up in flames and everyone's like, because everyone was cheering at first and they're like, wait, is that smoke? And it's like, this isn't good. 
And then I was like, come on, Laura Lee, like, duck out the plane or something. It's like, she just sits there and she's just kind of like praying. And then, boom, it ignites. I was like, that's a terrible way to go. And then Lottie's just the first one to kind of walk towards the water and just like falls out and screams. That's what I'm saying. Like, maybe that's supposed to be symbolic of like the vision that Lottie had, especially because like, I mean, none of them were okay with Laura Lee dying. Like, it just broke everyone's heart, especially like the warm goodbye they gave her hugging, which almost seems a little symbolic when you actually think about it because it's almost like a oh like from an outside perspective like within the confines of the show it's like okay they're wishing her luck but on the con outside it's almost like the actors being like oh we're gonna miss you this is your final scene type of thing it almost feels like that like you can almost look at like it you know with the way things are filmed you never know what her that actress is, who plays uh Laura Lee, you never know what her final scene i mean granted you could always make oh uh, maybe she's about, it's like no like they not not less we pull out a miracle and I was like the van thing of like no like that was an explosion so that's wild and without Laura Lee's kind of guidance I'm curious what Lottie's going to do because it seemed like she hasn't had any episode since I mean the main her medication was mainly to counter out those like visions and those stuff things she saw but now it's like Laura Lee kind of pointed her in a direction of like, no, it's not a bad thing and kind of had her embrace it more. So it's not an issue. Man, I love I love the show throwing me for a loop because I thought a Laura Lee off her, uh, no, a, a Lottie off her medication would have been an issue. And it hasn't really presented itself as one. Doesn't mean it won't eventually, but it also strikes Laura Lee off the suspect list. Still puts Lottie, um, and now because I was bouncing back and forth between it potentially being the person behind everything being Lottie or Laura Lee still puts, keeps Lottie on the list, but removes Laura Lee as a suspect, so. That was a bummer. I was like, wow. Because I, I, the entire time I was like, something's going to go wrong. I just felt it. I, like I said, I was expecting, like, I didn't know whether it's going to be a thing of, oh, she's going to get up and clip, hit a tree and, you know, like a very, like, it just makes me, like, because I was expecting almost like a Grand Theft Auto thing of, like, oh, you hit, like, a tree or something, and the wing co pops off, and boom, you die, waste it pops up, like, specifically Grand Theft Auto 5, but it just, that's what kind of popped in my mind, so I wasn't expecting, um, but I didn't expect her to fully get in the air, and then that to go down. Now, whether that was something else, like, maybe that's supposed to be like, oh, the woods don't want us to leave, and technically it didn't want you to leave, and did, you know, or did someone do that on purpose? I don't know. It just seemed like I, the fire came out of nowhere. So it could have just been like, well, the plane was there for God knows how long. It was, oh, maybe stuff was leaking somewhere. And just the, it igniting like that just seems suspicious, especially because it started like in the seat where Leonard was. So I was like, I don't know what to make of that. So that's all the stuff in the past. Present day, we have Shauna talking to Callie because Callie found Adam's card and obviously and i think that's such an interesting conversation because she still feels a little awkward about because it's like right i did kind of talk shit to you last time you called me out about this affair and how you want to use it to your advantage which was kind of shitty on Callie's part but sean was like i'm sorry but it's just like the way he makes me feel he wants me and it's like mom how do you know he is who he claims to be i looked him up online didn't find him she's like well there's millions of adam there could be like thousands of adam martin's like no the fact is everyone's on the internet like, there's no way you can go about not being on the internet. And if you're not on the internet, that should be a huge red flag that, like, wow, you have no social media? Hmm, I wonder why. What are you trying to hide? So, because, I, but I love what Shauna was saying before to Callie about, like, right, you got, you were pissed at me before because we both know, like, your dad really, like, that he's, like, having an affair of some sort. And it's like, even Callie doesn't fight back against it. So I, I thought she was going to be like, no, dad's not having it. It's like, no, we both know it. You were pissed at me for looking the other way. Now that I'm kind of doing something that's making me happy, I am fine. I am responding uh, to that. I am doing something. Yes, it's not the greatest thing. It's still a bad thing, but I'm doing something at least and it makes me happy and now you're even more pissy towards me, but it's like despite everything, despite her judgment well, like judgmental is the word she was using specifically but yeah, despite all the judgment like Callie is looking out for you because regardless of how complicated things are, you still are her mom and so she's like, right, maybe this guy is trying to get super close to you, get your story, and then expose it. It's kind of like the justification Callie says, and might be some truth to it. Uh, it does seem like the uh, their uh, graduate, their reunion is coming up, which I don't know why Jeff would be all, I guess they going in the past or something like that, because why Jeff's like so gun ho about it. It's like, you'd think your wife would have some trauma associated with high school, considering like 
the thing happened during high school, but he's like, nah, you're going to be a bombshell, you're going to draw a lot of attention, yada, yada, yada thing, type of situation, right? And so she actually does do some research and finds out that Adam, she claimed like she pretended like, oh, I'm part of this blah, 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 that helps. She's like, oh, my name is Sandra. I'm like, I, once again, I love when people come up with that stuff on the fly. I'm like, why didn't you think of that? It's like, crap, I didn't think about that. And then on top of uh, that, it turns out Adam didn't go to Pratt. It's like, oh, cool. So you're a liar. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And the moment um, later on, I thought was interesting uh, when there was a knock at the door and she was nervous. He was like, because Jeff was like, oh, you're expecting someone? She's like, no. I was like nervous too. Cause I was like, oh, is it is it Adam playing coy and just showing up? But in fact, it was Thaisa and she was there and she confided in Shauna about like, right, I'm having the... Um, sleepwalking in and I thought it was so interesting I was like oh well from what we heard it's not that bad but the fact is that she talked to sh what from what we saw it wasn't that bad like all we've seen is you climbed a tree you ate some dirt but then sh she told Shauna it's like you know how bad it can get so what we saw is only a glimpse of it I'm assuming it happened a lot more afterwards and ended up getting worse in what way We'll have to wait and see, but I think that's what that's kind of indicative of, of like, no, 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 it isn't just as what we, it's not just what we saw. It's, it's going to get worse going forward. Um, but it's like, right, the stress of everything, it's like all this going on, the blackmail, uh, things between her and Simone are kind of complicated. And she's like, right, my son's seen it. Sammy calls it the bad one. It's like, she's like, I'm fucking that kid up by like him seeing this side of me and she's scared. She's like, biscuit got out and she's like, yeah, and probably while I was in my, uh, in one of my, like my, um, sleepwalking states, I probably left the gate open and biscuit left. And she's just like, Sammy loves the shit out of that doll. Like she just feels like she's falling apart. Sean was like, don't worry to like, stay here. And I, I really thought it was this beautiful, cute moment. Like, obviously it's like you could stay in Callie's room and it's just like, it's interesting. Once again, just as they like made sure throughout the episode to kind of cut back to the past between Thaisa and Shauna into the present day. But you know, it's like, right. Do you ever think about what our life would have been like if it had never happened, if they had never gotten lost? And she's like, um, and I love Shauna talking about like, you know, she'd meet an artist or whatever and um, she'd have to dump him, you know, go abroad for a year, uh, meet Francois in France. And it's like, oh, what is he, a musician? No, he's a mime. And just like Thaisa laughing. And then Thaisa talking about like, well, this is what I thought my life would be. And then Shauna's like, that's exactly what you did with your life. But she's like, yeah, but after everything, it just... After everything we went through, it just doesn't feel real. And I think that's the saddest thing of like, oh yeah, this is my life, but it doesn't feel real. Like, that is almost like this intangible dream that I'm living it. But I think she almost halfway expects to wake up at any moment in time and find out it wasn't real. Because I guess it's like, because she probably, like all of them did, put on a brave face and kept living their lives the best they could. But that ended up, you know, obviously they're still a lot of deeper scars connected to all that, so. Uh, some other, in, well, since we're on the Thaisa's uh, train, she ended up going back home, and she ends up talking to Simone about it. It's like, right, the the stress of the campaign and stuff like that. Um, she's like, yeah, it's probably my fault, uh, you know, like, you know, it's like, I need help, and Simone's like, all right, we'll give you whatever help you need, sleep stuff. She's like, no, 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 Simone, I need you to take Sammy, and I need you to go to, like, your mom's place or something. And she's like, no, we, no, you don't understand. She's like, I'm scared I will hurt you. So I think that's a little foreshadowing, or rather pre-shadowing. Foreshadowing because the future of the show, but also uh, pre-shadowing is what I'm trying to say because it happened in the past. I think this is going to be a future instance of how bad things got that she hurt someone in her... Um, in her state of um, sleepwalking. But, um, yeah, kind of having to push away the people you love because you're scared. And that actually ties in, interestingly, with the conversation they had because it's like, you know, Shauna confided in her, once again, because they had that type of relationship, which I think is pretty dope. It's like, yeah, I'm having an affair. It's like, oh, and it's like, yeah, he makes me feel it. She's like, I don't even know how to really describe it. He's like, no, I get it. She's like, she used to feel that with Simone and it's like, oh, you don't feel anymore? It's like, no, but it's like, it's stable and safe and that's all that really matters, you know, even if I don't feel it anymore. Because for her, it's like, yeah, when you feel it with somebody, it doesn't always work out. I'm assuming that could be indicative of Travis and Matt, that uh, their it situation, that, that feeling it probably led to complications. And in that moment, Shauna was like, yeah, I do get what you mean. Is that because she's, she's thinking about this whole Adam thing. So she confronts him. 
about the Pratt thing. He's like, right, you caught me in a lie, this and that. And then she's like, what about this? He's like, well, I was born here. I have an older brother who does this. So he's got answers. So it's not like, but, you know, that could be a lot of, she didn't press it too much about, like, well, I didn't find any social media about you. It's like, it's still a pretty big deal, the fact that you, he's like, oh, we'll get away. We can get away. You can ask me whatever you want. And she's like, how am I supposed to explain it? He's like, I don't give a shit. It's just like, let's go out. And just when she's like, all right, she's debating it because she's putting on the dress of, like, right, the reunion and everything. But she's like, no. She's about ready to pack a bag. And lo and behold, what does she find? God damn glitter. That motherfucker Adam. Once again, that was like my thing of like, I didn't think it was Adam. I was I, My money was on Jeff. But someone else had been like, oh, it couldn't have been Jeff. They were totally right. So turns out it is Adam. And in the moment she looks at, she beep, 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 boops. And there are the journals going. Now, once again, could be like, oh, it seems like it's Adam when in actuality it could. But it's like, no, like he was the only one in that closet super recent. That was like last night or the night before, whatever the case may be. So... No, that had to be like, well, because he got, she kicked him out like that day. So I'm assuming like it, it had to be him time frame wise, it seems like, because not enough time had passed for it to be anyone else. So, and he also took the journal. So he's confronting her. So she's like, who the hell are you? And he doesn't really say anything. We're going to wait to the next episode to fill that, fill in that blank. But I'm like, all right, once again, final bets on and thoughts and theories about who he could be. I, like I said, people have convinced me I'm on that I'm on that um hob, um hobby train. I'm on it. I'm I've been on it for a little bit. I'm like, all right, let's find out who you really are, you bastard. Like once again, I feel like she would have recognized it with him, but once again, maybe she hasn't seen him in that 25 years, so she doesn't know it. I mean, once again, that also is determined on whether or not he actually survived or not. So let's find out who you are and why you're doing all of this. Um. At the same time, there's everything with Misty and how that ties into everything with uh, Nat. Um, she ends up ordering more drugs because it's her way of dealing with everything, especially after the blow up she had with Shauna and um, Thaisa last episode and just being so close to the person potentially responsible for killing Travis. Like all of that was just a little too much. And also like everything between her and Kevin, like it's just, it was a lot. So... She's ordering drugs. Misty, keeping an eye on it, sees that she's getting drugs and she runs um, to try and stop her. And I love that she, I love her way of stopping her, pushing out of the way, doing the drugs herself and then you know, like spreading the rest. She's like, I saved you. She's like, oh my God, I've never done drugs before. It's like, you just got rid of $300 worth of, co I love that she, the line I love from that. You're, get off, you're, you, uh, you're on my coke. I love that. It's just so good. And then like, uh, Misty checking, she's like, I'm checking her pulse and everything, because she's like, wow. And it's like, Natalie's like, wait, you were watching me? She's like, and Misty kind of shuts up there. She's like, uh, 14, no, 15 count. And then she smashes the owl, and it's like, you were watching, oh, were you watching me fuck Kevin? She's like, no, no, it's not like that. It's like, we well, kind of were, weren't you? But it's like, no, it's not as voyeuristic. It's like, no, friends look after you. It's like, oh, we're friends, Misty? It's like, yes. Like, despite everything, I'm like the bestest friend you've got right now, which isn't saying a lot. You know, but it's like, right, I was concerned about you. I wasn't going to let you relapse again. I'm the one that's been working this Travis case. I ended up finding out, did you know that the day after he died, his bank account was emptied? That was me who did that. And she's like, uh, you know, but I mean, she's like, what? I mean, that was coke. She's like, I've never done cocaine before. I mean, not unless that was like bath salts or fentanyl. I could be dead in the next few minutes, but fine, whatever, and leaves. It's like, oh, like in her own twisted way, which let's not pretend like Misty some angel. She's twisted in her own way. She, um, she definitely, uh, goes about things the most shady way, but it, it, I think in her own twisted way, she does believe like she's looking out for Natalie. I think it is, I think it speaks volumes that she reached out, well, to the point Shauna was like, hey, leave me alone, but I guess like, She's never been pretty tight with anyone amongst the group. And I guess Natalie's the closest person she's gotten to. Like, maybe just in these more recent time or maybe during everything when they were lost. Maybe that led to her being like, no, 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 we're pretty tight. Maybe they grew tight during that. I don't know. But I love when Misty comes back. Jessica's got a burger. It's like, right, you don't care if I kill Caligula? And it's like, no, I'll get another one. 
It's like, all right. And then she starts throwing stuff at her. And then, like, Caligula gets let go. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, my sweet boy. I didn't mean, I didn't mean anything. I I didn't mean it. And it was like, oh. And then Jessica, like, are you okay? You're kind of, she's like, no, it's just been one of those nights. She's like, are you hungry? And Jessica kind of nodded. She's like, me too, I'm hungry too. I'm going to fix her something to eat. I was like, poor. It's probably going to take a little while for Misty to come down from some of that coke. And you're like, wow. And even Jessica's looking like, that lady's wild. So, uh, imprisonment continues. I'm curious what the end result of this is going to be. Is it going to end with Jessica dead? She's going to get let go? I was almost wondering, I'm wondering are we setting up a thing of despite everything, will there be like a Misty and Jessica thing? I don't know. Probably not. Because I, because Misty probably knows, like, right, the moment I let you go, you're either going to call the cops or you're going to try and kill me yourself. So, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, so that's fascinating. Uh, but Natalie's trying to get whatever information she can get, um, about Travis's account, but she's not family. So, I wonder, does he not have much family left? Could, well, once again, that hints to some things like maybe that's hinting that Javi isn't alive because if he was, Natalie would be able to track him down. But it could just be he's in the wind, so there's no tracking him down. We know his dad's dead. Uh, his mom might have died sometime after the fact, like sometime over the years, so we don't know. So why she can't, can't go to anyone else to uh, get that information for her? She's in a very bad place to the point she found some of her coke on the floor. She said, oh, there you go. So I was like, oh, man, that sucks. But she goes into a meeting just to run into an old pal of her, Sue. She's like, I promise I'm not going to hit you again. As I write, you used to be my sponsor and everything. So, Travis. And we got this really, like, heartbreaking, like, you know, this mo thing between her and Travis where she was saying, like, right, when I was really, really bad off, Travis made me promise him that I would never kill myself. And he promised me he wouldn't either. She's like, now, I'm a liar, so my word doesn't mean squat. But him, he was always truth trustworthy. He always kept his word. And I thought, that, I was like, oh. Once again, it just makes it sadder, like, looking at them in the past, having the issues, yes. But knowing, like, no matter what, good and bad, good, good or bad, good and bad, that knowing how Travis's story, it's always that, once again, it's that heartbreaking angle to it. Um... But I love that she forces the lady's hands like, no, 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 give me the information or I let your employers know what we did, you know, selling the per personal information of people you knew uh, at, at your bank to um, identity thieves or something like that. So it's like, yeah, um, so they'll either punish you for that or they'll be so proud of how much you've grown. And she's like, I regret ever meeting you, Natalie. So she's going to get what she wants. Now we're one step closer to finding out who might be potentially responsible for Travis's death because whoever emptied out his bank account is most likely the one to have something to do with his death. So like I said, not unless it ends up being a hobby thing because that's still up in the air. Whether the, Because like I said, if he was still alive, I feel like Natalie would have turned to that option. But once again, it could just be he's so far off the radar. And that also is, maybe he's Adam, maybe he isn't. None of the others have met uh, Adam. The only person that's met Adam is Shauna, so... We'll see if he's just some other Joe, uh, Joe Blow, Joe Schmo, or what. I was about to say, like, he's not... I was about to say that'd be fucking weird if that was the case. And I was like, alright, wild, wild, th throw it out there theory. I was just thinking about it. I'm like, I'm not gonna think, like, he's not that young. I was about to say, like, he's not young enough to be, like, 25. I was about to throw out that weird theory. I was like, like I said, just... Throwing out there, throwing spaghetti to the wall to see if it sticks. It's like, no, but he's not that young because he's got to be in like his 30s or something like that. So it's like, no, it, it can't be. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. So who else could Adam be? I don't know. I'm, I'm just so excited to see where the hell the next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about until the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.